Hi, I'm Tobin and welcome to AEMC, Australia's first electric motorcycle dealership. This is the 2021 Energica SS9RS. This bike features a 21.5 kilowatt hour battery. That's the biggest battery that you can get in an electric motorcycle. The range on this bike is highway of about 200 kilometers, uh, mixed riding, you're probably going to get about 250 kilometers and city slow speed stuff, you could get well over 300 or more kilometers. This model features upgraded Olin front forks and rear shock. This bike also features the new EMC motor, which is a lighter motor and it's got integrated liquid cooling with the controller. These bikes were developed in the Moto E racing series, so they've been really pushed to their limits, which means that most street riders are not gonna get these bikes anywhere close to where they're gonna fail. They've got liquid cooling in the motor and controller. This is a compression gearbox, which makes the bike sound pretty different to other electric bikes. It's not like the Zeros with a belt drive that's very quiet. This has a chain, so you can hear the chain and you can hear the compression going on in the motor. You can really push these bikes hard on the track on the road. They're not gonna overheat and they're not gonna to start to reduce power to the motor like some of the other electric motorcycles will. This RS version of the bike has 215 Newton meters of torque. Now to put that into context, the only petrol bike that I can think of that has a similar power output is the 2.5 liter Triumph Rocket. This bike has been mapped slightly differently to the Ego. It doesn't have as an aggressive sport mapping. It can still do 0 to 100 in about 2.8 seconds, so a tiny bit slower than the Ego still extraordinarily quick. Unlike the other Energica models, this has a classic sort of motorcycle seat, which means you can ride two up or you can ride single. The other thing that sets this bike out from the other models Energica does is it's a real classic headlight as opposed to the sort of futuristic lights they put on the Ego and the Rebel. It's pretty much the exact same chassis and bike as the Ego and the Rebel. It just has different fairings and it has a different mapping on this, which means this one is built for touring, so it's not as much direct power as the Ego, but it will have slightly longer range. The bike has the same display as the Ego and the Rebel. It's a pretty simple digital display, which can connect to your app as well through Bluetooth. Through the controls on the handlebar, you can change the riding modes. You've got urban, you've got wet, sport, and eco. You can also set your own custom riding modes to your preference. You've got cruise control. You've actually got a reverse gear here and to start the bike, you have to hold the brake and engage the ignition. These Energica bikes have level one, level two, and level three charging capabilities, which sets them apart from most other electric motorcycles. To access the charging port, just open the seat lock here. This gives you access to a type two charging socket there, and also a CCS combo if you want a DC fast charge. Most people are gonna charge these bikes slowly from home or at work. To do that, you're gonna use a type two cable which fits into this section of the charger. And then you just plug it into a standard wall outlet. You're gonna get about 2.5 kilowatts from that standard wall outlet. Uh, the onboard charger on this bike, the onboard AC charger limits it at three kilowatts per hour. So you can also connect to a faster AC charger like this, but you're not gonna be able to use the full capacity of the AC charger because the onboard AC charger on the bike limits you at three kilowatts per hour. Some of you may have an AC fast charger like this at home or at work. Um, this on most bikes will allow you to charge quicker than a standard wall outlet. You plug into the same port that you did for standard wall outlet charging. With this charging setup, you could probably charge the bike in about six or seven hours. On a standard wall socket, you're looking at more like eight or nine hours. Your final option and most advanced is DC fast charging. So this bike has a DC fast charging limit of 25 kilowatts per hour. That's a bit of a game changer really. It means you can charge this whole bike in about 40 minutes in a public charging station that has DC fast charging capability or level three. To level three charge, you need a CCS combo socket. Usually those are at the fast charging stations. People don't tend to have those cables themselves. You just plug it into the same spot. You pull out the extra section of the charging socket here, which then gives you full access to the full CCS combo port. Some DC fast charging stations can charge up to 300 kilowatts per hour. This bike will not let you go above 25 kilowatts. That's to protect the battery and the controller. If you try and charge faster than that rate, 
what you're probably going to do is the cells are going to charge at an uneven level and then you're going to possibly damage some of the cells in the battery. While your bike's charging like this, if you went off and got a coffee or something, no one can pull the cable out. It automatically locks when you take the key out of the ignition. So this won't come out until you put the key back in the ignition and start the bike. This is my personal favorite of all the electric motorcycles we have in our shop. It's the biggest battery, the longest range, but it's got that more upright riding position, which makes it a lot more comfortable to ride than some of the other sport bikes we have in here. If you're looking for the best electric touring motorcycle, this is it. There's nothing better in the world right now.